people have been asking for it and it is finally time to create it. This is the analysis video of my favourite and a lot of fan favourites character Kenny. Kenny was introduced in the first episode of the first game and went on to appear in two games with a couple of cameos in the third. Kenny, voiced by Gavin Hammond, was able to entirely captivate audiences and players alike with his witty redneck charm and his balls to the floor attitude when it came to the apocalypse. If you guys do enjoy this video, please consider subscribing and let me know what other videos you want me to make on Walking Dead characters. Also, check me out on Twitch, where I'm going to be doing a full playthrough of the Walking Dead franchise next month. Without any further ado, let's get into this. Kenny before the apocalypse was a commercial fisherman who lived in Fort Lauderdale in Florida. So Kenny is your typical Florida man meme. Kenny was raised by his father who taught Kenny how to repair broken cars. Kenny has stated in the past that his father was a mean son of a bitch, but that he taught him about respect. Kenny's knowledge about engineering eventually extended to boats due to his love for the ocean and traveling, which would massively help him during the apocalypse. When Kenny, when Kenny grew up, he became a commercial fisherman and would hunt for snapper fish and yellow lime. But during the summer, he was selfish, and during one of his fishing tours, he found a sick octopus and took it ashore to a veterinarian's, which is where he met Katia. They fell in love and got married, eventually having Kenny Jr. Or... Ugh, duck. Kenny kept his job as a fisherman and began catching tuna, which he would grill for the family. They also had a dog at one point, however this dog had to be put down long before the outbreak. Kenny often went sailing on the open sea for months at a time, which kept him away from his family, which after their deaths he came to regret deeply. Kenny and his family were returning from Memphis when the outbreak started, and he and his son were seen at Gill's pit stop just before the outbreak. Before arriving at Herschel's farm, Kenny remarked that someone had grabbed a duck, and he fought the man before realizing it was a walker and driving off. Katya remarks that they drove past so many people who needed help, but they just kept driving. Kenny has such an intricate personality. He is not just your typical gun swinging redneck. He is caring, emotional, but above all else, protective. Kenny was willing to take on a man who was considerably larger than him in order to protect his son. But this is not the only time we see Kenny being protective of the children around him. He chooses to kill Jane depending on what route you take in order to avenge the death of AJ, despite it eventually being revealed that AJ was alive. But his final act is drawing walkers to him while he is paralyzed in order to protect Clementine and AJ. So his protective nature comes through the entire time. Kenny is also quite considerate. He acknowledges that Lily is hurting when he and Lee are forced to put Larry down in the meat locker during the second episode. Kenny is however crushed by the loss of his wife and son. He never seems to fully recover from this. However, when caring for Clementine and AJ, he seems to recover some of his humanity after the events of season two. It is even willing to sacrifice himself when they reach the walled community of Wellington. The one aspect of Kenny's personality that shows how complex the character is, is when he has his moments of temper. He has a lust for vengeance, and when Carver beats his eye out, he chooses to bludgeon him and brutally kill him at the end of season two episode. Kenny as a character has such a long history of loss. He loses his wife, his son, one of his close friends in Lee, and the remainder of his friends when he decides to help save Ben or Krista. He does show that he is not entirely evil when he decides to either help Ben when he falls out the clock tower, or help Krista when she falls in the hole. Kenny also unfortunately loses everyone at the lodge as well. He even then goes on to lose his wife in a later episode. Kenny has a horrendous death. And it becomes apparent that his character had accepted death at this point and knew it was coming to him. So he decided to give up and face the music, which shows how much he had to endure through the apocalypse for such a motivated and competent survivor to know it was time to give up. Kenny is probably, besides Lee and Clementine, the character that has the biggest impact on the story. Kenny essentially makes choices through Lee on many occasions. When it comes to instances such as Larry within the meat locker, it is ultimately Kenny who puts him down, and this is non-determinant. However, I always agreed with Kenny's choice which makes it considerably easier to make this choice, since either way, Larry will die. Further into the season, you can make the choice to kill Duck yourself, as opposed to letting Kenny do it, which is ultimately one of the decisions that you as the player will make that will stick with Kenny into his appearance in the second game. Throughout the remainder of the season, Kenny goes off the rails after the death of both Katia and Duck, and as such, he does not make as many decisions or interventions as he does. However, his interjection to save either Ben or Krista is evident if you decide not to go alone to save Clementine, and when you are bitten, he seems to lose it even more. 
Jenny vanishes after he jumps down to save either Krista or Ben. And when he comes back in the further season, it was a very welcome reintroduction. But the Kenny who comes back in season 2 is quite different to his season 1 counterpart. He is full bed Kenny, baby! Let's go! In seriousness, Kenny comes back into the game in the second episode of the second game. The group is arguing about whether to let Clementine's group into the lodge, but when Kenny sees Clementine, they all go into it. You get a choice to sit with Kenny for dinner at this point, or sit with Luke. However, whichever table you sit at, Kenny will also move to. But then when he asks Clementine for a can of food, he accidentally calls her Duck, which has a really surprising impact on him. While they are in the house department store during the third episode, Kenny is constantly trying to devise an escape plan. He wants out and is desperate to do so following Carver killing Walter, and potentially Alvin depending on what choices you make at the lodge. This is where Kenny's arguably biggest impact on the story comes in. Carver discovers that the group is trying to escape, utilizing radios to learn their working patterns. Clementine is caught holding the radio, and before Carver does anything to her, Kenny comes forward and states that the radio is his, and he is the one that took it. Kenny offers to hand it back to Carver. Carver then uses the radio to beat Kenny to a pulp, and destroys his eye to the point where he needs a bandage on it, and everyone thought he was actually going to die from his wounds. Kenny puts himself in harm's way to protect Clementine, and it shows that Kenny does really care about Clementine, and does see a part of Lee in her, so he does all he can to protect her, and this trait continues to show. As I discussed in a previous video, there was initially a plan for Kenny to be the carver of this game, and this was also confirmed by Gavin Hammond when I interviewed him. And I'm so glad they didn't go with the original plan, and decided to show that Kenny is not a bad man, but just has been for a considerable amount during the apocalypse. When they escape, Kenny makes a decision, and decides to beat Carver to death using a crowbar. Clementine is given an option here to stay and watch, or to leave with the rest of them. However, neither will impact Kenny's choice to beat Carver, and he proceeds to render his face into nothing. After they leave, Clementine is with Kenny's new wife, Sarita, and while they walk through the herd to escape Hal's department store, Sarita gets bitten, and Clementine has to decide whether to hack her arm off or leave it. But we won't see the outcome of this until the next episode! Let's wait a couple of months for the DLC! In the next episode, Kenny snaps at Clementine when Sarita is either dying or dead, determined by your decision when she is bitten. And he says that just because she is a little girl does not mean she is excused for getting people killed, meaning he seems to have lost the ability to see Clementine as a little girl anymore, and that she needs to grow up. Kenny is also responsible for helping deliver Rebecca and Alvin's baby, since at this point she has gone into labour. So Kenny is responsible for the delivery of AJ, AJ, which is probably why he is so attached to AJ in the later episodes. Then we see Kenny's character really start to plummet. Rebecca is in a bad way after giving birth to AJ, but the group continues to move towards Wellington, before they come across Arvo. Arvo is a Russian man who wants some help for his sister, who is in need of bandages. However, while he is asking for supplies, Arvo's group of Russians slowly surrounds our survivors. Everyone pulls their guns, and during the standoff, Rebecca has passed out, and her head has slumped. She died of hypothermia, and reanimated in only a couple of minutes. If you call out to Kenny, he will walk over and shoot Rebecca, which causes the two groups to enter a massive firefight. The firefight continues into the next episode, and starts with Kenny shooting one of the Russians in the head, to protect Luke. Then Jane kills the last one. During the fight, Arvo's sister is killed and begins to reanimate, so Clem kills her and Arvo grieves. When the firefight ends, Kenny walks to execute Arvo, blaming him for the altercation that had just unfolded. However, Mike and Luke get in the way. Eventually, Arvo says he will take them to his house because they have supplies, but Kenny insists he must be held at gunpoint and tied up the entire time. They have nearly reached the house, but first of all, they need to cross a frozen lake. This lake unfortunately was not very safe to walk on, and as a result of this, Luke falls into the lake and drowns. Kenny snaps at Arvo, since he initially ran off across the lake before Luke died, so Kenny beats him unconscious before Mike stops him or Clementine tries to talk him down. However, both options will actually stop Kenny. Kenny has such rage towards Arvo. This could be due to some hidden racism from Kenny, where he will call Arvo commie, or simply lashing out following the death of Alvin, Rebecca, and the lodge survivors. Him and Clementine go outside to fix the truck, but then Kenny gets frustrated with the cart not starting, and goes back inside. This is when Jane makes a comment that makes you consider The Walking Dead's premise. Jane states that Kenny is no different to Carver, because in reality, he isn't. 
If Kenny had been put into a position the same as Carver, he would have undoubtedly done the same thing. And he even did when it came to bludgeoning Carver, and all the abuse that he is throwing towards Arvo at the moment. This is when the final battle nearly starts. Mike, Arvo, and potentially Bonnie are trying to sneak away in the truck, and Arvo decides to shoot Clementine so they can get away. They flee, and Kenny screams after them. Clementine wakes up in the back of a truck with Kenny, Jane, and AJ, where Jane and Kenny are arguing. They drive until they hit a barrier of cars, and Kenny gets out to investigate. This is when Jane insists that Clementine, her, and AJ leave Kenny behind. They don't, and Clementine manages to drive to a rest area that Kenny mentioned. Jane turns up to the rest area, however, she doesn't have AJ with her. This causes Kenny to frenzy, and he goes searching for AJ in the snowstorm. Jane turns to Clem and tells her to move so that she can see Kenny for what he is, and their final fight begins. They brawl and get into a very heated fight, and Kenny proceeds to gain the upper hand over Jane due to size and frenzy, despite Jane being a talented brawler. Clementine will fall to the floor and is given a choice. Well, actually, three choices. She can turn away and then shoot Kenny after he kills Jane. She can look away and not shoot, which would leave Kenny alive. Or finally, she can shoot Kenny to save Jane. Going off of the saving Kenny route, they will then decide where they go from here. Do they go towards Wellington or do they part ways? If you go with Kenny to Wellington, as sad of a decision as it is, which is deliberately placed to try and be as sad as the lead decision from season one, you're forced to decide. Do you go into Wellington with AJ and leave Kenny outside, or do you stay outside with Kenny? Kenny's final appearance is when he teaches Clementine to drive. Clementine ends up crashing this car off the road into a tree after veering from a walker. This sends Kenny through the windscreen and breaks both his legs. Clementine tries to save him, but she is unable to, as walkers group up on Kenny, and he tells Clementine to save AJ and abandon him. Kenny is devoured by walkers, and his story comes to a tragic end. Kenny is the second most screen time character within the Telltale Universe, just after Clementine with her 20 episodes, and this also gives him the most appearances for a non-playable character. Kenny has no confirmed surname, however Gavin Hammond once stated that he quite liked Fisher for Kenny's surname. Kenny's hand-to-hand -hand combat actually drastically improves between Season 1 and Season 2, showing that he has evidently had some problems during the time jump, meaning he could have been involved in a lot of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Kenny's attire is very similar to Beast from The Wolf Among Us, another Telltale game who Gavin Hammond also provided the voice for. Kenny is one of three characters to receive a permanent eye injury within the Walking Dead universe, the others being the Governor and Carl. A lot of the trivia and cut content for Kenny was released by Gavin Hammond, including the Season 2 version of Kenny where he was the carver of the season and Kenny's cut death in Season 3. However, more details of these are in my Iceberg videos. Check that out for a more in-depth look at these facts. Kenny is such a fan favourite character. He is the character who appears the most but we never get to play as. He is a father figure to Clementine and a best friend figure to Lee. And his character is also very kind hearted. The reason Kenny was always one of my favourites was because he was truly the character I feel had the most storylines and character arcs. He starts as a determined and loving father and quickly falls into a mourning shell of a man. He then becomes optimistic of survival only to have that stripped away from him and he plans to sacrifice himself to save someone else. Then he goes off on his own, and finds a new woman that he loves, and a new group. But this group falls to shit as well. He then loses his eye, and becomes humiliated. Kenny truly loses everything in his time on the game, and his death shows that he really gave up towards the end, and lost his passion to fight. I hope one day we get to see more of Kenny, potentially in a comic, or maybe even a spin-off game. However, I do not think we ever will. But I would like to start I would like to finish by thanking Gavin Hammond for such an amazing portrayal of such an exceptional character that is one of the most liked characters within the history of Walking Dead games. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, please consider subscribing and let me know what other characters you want me to make videos about. I have a couple planned and I'm really excited for the next one coming up, which will be following the characters of <laughs> Family Day.